My first experience with the Luigi's Mansion franchise was early this year when I was asked to help someone with a puzzle in Luigi's Mansion 3, and I was pretty surprised by how good it was, and felt sad that I'd never given the games a look previously. This started my obsession with the series, and with the announcement of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD coming to the Switch, I picked up a copy of the game to get ready for the release of the HD version. But how is it going to translate to the Nintendo Switch? This is my review of Luigi's Mansion 2 HD for the Nintendo Switch, and thank you Nintendo for providing me a review copy of the game. I should also point out I could not get my game capture equipment working, and it could be on its way out. Now for those who are concerned you need to have played the first, fear not, as you don't really need to play the original GameCube game to enjoy this. After the first game, King Boo escapes his prison painting and breaks the Dark Moon, which was a large moon object that kept all the ghosts in Evershade Valley calm. With the Dark Moon shattered, the ghosts start causing chaos, resulting in Professor E. Gad hiding in his bunker for safety. E. Gad reaches out to Luigi to help him out and collect the pieces of the Dark Moon. It's a simple story, but does give the job by giving the player a clear goal of what you're doing. The first thing you're going to notice about Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is that it looks great, bringing up the 3DS version more in line with the third installment earlier released on the Switch. The game looks beautiful, and all the character models from Luigi and the ghosts have been given a major upgrade, even down to Luigi's clothing. By doing this, it helps the ghost personality shine even more, which can only put a smile on my face as I enjoyed watching what they were up to without the fear of Luigi trying to suck them into a hoover. As Luigi walks around the mansion, you notice the lighting is improved, adding more to the atmosphere of the game. It's not the Resident Evil mansion, but it's spooky enough. Each mansion has a plenty of great self-contained puzzles for you to solve, as well as many collectibles to encourage you to search through everything you can interact with. And this is without talking about the updated controls which have been giving a welcome overhaul. With the 3DS only having one directional stick, Luigi was locked into aiming his hoover the way he was facing, which was a tad annoying. But in the HD version, the game now benefits from using both directional sticks, one to control Luigi, and one to control the direction of a hoover, which I fell in love with straight away. Although I'm still annoyed I have to use a button to make Luigi aim up and down, whether a second directional stick should have been enough. The game has also been given a rumble and motion controls which are not necessarily needed, but are a welcome bonus which I was grateful for, and definitely brings it more in line with today's games. On playing just a few minutes of this version, I was convinced I'd probably never play the 3DS version ever again. This is the definitive version of the game and the only way you should play it, although it's the only way you can play this game outside the second hand market. And this is a big factor to bring up. This is a straight port of the 3DS version, with very little changes added to it, which will come as a big disappointment to many, and I think it's one of the biggest shortcomings of the HD version. The game still plays out the same it did on the 3DS, as rather being based in one big mansion, Luigi must hunt around through five of them, each one of them having their own set of objectives to achieve through missions. This structure makes the game feel like an arcade game rather than a grand adventure, which played more into the 3DS's pick up and go mentality, but feels dated when bringing it over to the Switch. I believe this is one area that really could have been tweaked to be more in line with games such as Banjo-Kazooie rather than Mario 64. It seems weird to bring these old games into discussion, but I believe the comparison stands. When Mario obtained a star, he was thrown out of the level to go back in again. Whereas Banjo collected a jigsaw piece, the adventure continued. Here, as soon as you complete an objective, Egad whips you back out rather than giving you the opportunity to continue adventure. I just allow giving the player the option to continue on rather than going back to the bunker would have really helped the pacing of the game. The arcade feel still feels the case whenever you die. Luigi is sent back to the mission select screen, as well as losing any of the coins you have picked up, which you need to upgrade your hoover. However, if you do find a golden bone during a rummaging, the ever so helpful Polterpup is there to lick you back to life. The other flaws of the 3DS game still remain, as the load times are still present, but thankfully not as much as I can remember. But my main irk is Egad is constantly phoning Luigi up every two minutes at the beginning of the game to explain something basic or something has just occurred. This takes you out of the immersion and does little for the pacing, and does not allow that moment to breathe a little. I know you want to help Luigi Egad, but just give me a minute! I really hope the developers would have removed his excessive calls, as they really bug you in playing the original version. The game also doesn't have any new additional content, and this can highlight another negative point, and that's it's being released at full price. Whilst I appreciate the game has been given a pretty lick of paint, the fact it's a port rather than a remake makes me believe Nintendo should have released this as a cheaper option, as Luigi's Mansion 3, which is the better game, is available at the same price. The game does have a multiplayer option, but I didn't play it here so I can't really speak of it as part of the review. 
Like, don't get me wrong, the game is still fun and took me about 15 hours to finish the main quest, but it still falls at the last hurdle of being the third installment equal. The game does, however, make a solid entry for the series and gives me hope that other titles from the 3DS can make the successful jump to the Switch, such as Samus Returns. It also gives me hope we will get a remake of the first Luigi's Mansion and allows the fans to have access to all three titles on the Switch. Despite the lack of new content and being a straight port, I still thoroughly enjoyed my time with Luigi's Mansion 2. I really enjoyed finding all the pieces of the Dark Moon and the boss battles were a sheer delight. Seeing the game be freshened up so much gives me so much hope for older titles that are currently unavailable and makes me so excited as a Nintendo Switch owner. Maybe a DLC in the future could push this quest to the heights the third game achieved, but for now it just falls behind. I'm giving Luigi's Mansion 2 HD on the Nintendo Switch 8 out of 10. For more content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell, and you can also listen to the Retro Wars podcast each week where we talk about all the gold games we used to play back when we were kids. Until then, I've been Danny from Retro Wars. Take care.